Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, um, for this week's visual novel, Saturday, I was supposed to be doing, um, When the Night Comes, but then I got really distracted with Andorel and also the Arcana. Yeah, so, um, so I decided to do something else. So this is another, um, I mean, it's another game. It's one of those games that, um, emerged after the huge success of the Arcana. So, uh, normally, um, Sorry, not normally, like I found it on Tumblr and it was suggested after I started uh, following the um, blog for the um, development of When the Night Comes. And uh, yeah, so apparently this game is also um, one of those that have the same themes, like it has magic and, and I think this one also deals with uh, stars and visions. So yeah, basically the same premise. And um... And also this game is um, not on, um, so you know, when the night comes is uh, a PC game. So you download it on your computer or laptop and you just play. I think you can also download it on your Mac, but then this one, you can download it on your phone. Not sure if it's um, on iOS as well, but I found it on the uh, Play Store. And I think you can also download it on your computer, but I'm not really sure. So, um, yeah, so, so far this has only two, um, so the prologue has two parts, and I played the first uh, part, and I found a lot of bugs in it, like, first of all, there is a bug with the, um, the thing, the, yeah, anyways, let's just start. So, press on ascend, and, yeah, so, um, this is the, the menu so um as i mentioned it has a lot of bugs and then like this is one of those bugs so first of all you can see the uh, letters overlapping in the name field but the good thing about it is that you can choose your uh, pronouns so i uh, normally i would uh, stick with um, val which is the name i use for all my characters and i use they them and yeah so let's get started so part one and yeah, see, this is what I meant. So it takes a lot of few seconds, like after you click on something, it takes a few seconds before it changes. Okay, the rap, uh, oh, the rap of the coachman's knuckles against the door of the carriage wakes me with a start. And then you have to click on the arrow on the right. It's not hard to tell that I've arrived. There is no turning back now. The calm, uh, the calm air that once stifled the cabin is gone, replaced by the chatter of a city in celebration, the sounds of a nation embracing peace, and I get to be part of it, part of history. I feel excited, sure, more excited than I've ever been. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Who knows who's going to be uh, in the attendance? Kings and queens? He rose from every corner. My hands are close to trembling, um, and I haven't even seen the city yet. As I step onto the t uh, tile street, a familiar spell of dizziness hits me. No, oh, it's, I suppose, uh, to be expected. If any events were worthy of a vision, it'd be this one. Muffled voices flow through me, colors swim in front of my eyes. So, just like in the Arcana, your character is the apprentice, in this game, your character is the oracle. Uh, thousands of images flash like lights in the sky and... Oops, sorry, it just clicks so fast. The star, uh, for now, only murmurs of a change and approaching figure. Yeah, so uh, so I was saying, um, in this game, your character is the oracle. And supposedly, you can see visions of the future based on whatever it is in the sky. I mean, I'm not really into the lore of this game, so I just found it by accident, or it was suggested to me, so I guess we're just gonna have to figure it out. This is more vague than I'm used to, but they will uh, tell me in time. I just have to wait. I shake the dizziness from my hand, taking in my surroundings. I heard that the... Oh, whatever this city is was beautiful but I wasn't quite prepared for this like this game has a lot of um, really hard to 
pronounced names. I just hope I don't butcher them. And yeah, uh, colorful fabrics, uh, glimmering jewels, uh, steps of gold, it, it almost feels utopia. And this is what I mean by bugs. Okay. The street of the city leading from the palace are alive with music and cheers. The royal precision must be making uh, its way through. A beautiful carriage draped in colors of the royal family leads the parade. I wonder who it is? The Empress? It must be. As far as I remember, the Emperor is away. And the princes don't leave the palace. I wonder why. As I join the flow, um, the flow of the crowd, I find my eyes drawn to one specific figure. An elven man weighs through it with ease, draped in a patterned cloak. Okay, so this is one of the love interests. Um, I can recognize the markings of oil or someone in their senses. Uh, so this is how you approach him, so well, polite, I think, yeah, yeah, so, um, polite, excuse me, uh, the stranger appears startled as I call out to them, oh, my sincerest apologies. Yeah, so uh, this is another one of those bugs, like you can see uh, his blush coming through his cloak and also on the other side, but it's fine. I mean, the art is really beautiful and I think he's also one of the love interest, but I don't know how to say his name. So I'm just going to keep uh, calling him the prince because he's one of the princes. Um, yeah, so um, I'm clicking on the dialog box but it's not uh, progressing I'm not sure why like um yeah there we go I'm afraid I haven't uh, much time to spare so I think you're supposed to click on the arrow but I, I keep clicking on the arrow and nothing happens please enjoy the parade huh mm, come on he must have a business in the sanctum It'll be a wonder if he gets there before the procession. Best of luck to him. A sudden call of my name tears my eyes from the gate where the man disappeared. Nikandi. Oh, uh, Val, there you are. So this is another love interest, I think. I've been waiting hours for you. Glad to, to see you finally found your way. Didn't get lost among the royalty. Condi's welcome is as warm as ever, arms open wide and smile even wider. Okay. So, friendly or professional? Friendly. I'm enveloped in a tight hug the second I open my arms and return. After a few seconds and at least one attempt to pick me up and spin me, Nikondi pulls back and smiles that blinding smile. I missed you, Val. Hmm. You're really beautiful art. Also different from what we are used to. And yeah, you need to come visit me uh, more often. Do you know how much you've missed out on? I can only imagine. You'll have to fill me in once we fi uh, find our rooms. I find a real smile forming for the first time since this trip began. It's hard to, not to be affected by her joy. She appears delighted for a moment before her cheer fades. By the way, her voice is hushed. Have you heard the rumors? Rumors? What rumors? The summit hasn't even begun. Gossip already? The summit, oh yeah. Mikanji bites her lip. I thought not. You did only just get here. I'll fill you in later. That certainly doesn't bode well. Enough of that talk. The stars will show you before I can tell you, I'm sure. Let me introduce you to someone. Before she could try and turn away, a pair of assistants approaches. One of them whispers to Mikandi's ear and the smile 
disappears. She sighed. Not even a second to breathe. I'm sorry, Belle. I'll find you later. Um, yeah, so that was breathe, not breath. In the previous dialogue. With a final pat on the arm, Nikondi is guided away. It makes sense that the first human ambassador would be popular today. It's a bit surprising it hasn't been pointed out more now that I think about it. Okay, so our character is the first, I don't know. Humans aren't exactly plentiful anywhere but home. Soon I hear someone calling out my name in a stage whisper. Looking both directions, the voice calls me one once more a bit louder from my life. I take a few steps through the looming gates and there they are. A short girl with colorful hair waves at me beckoning to her small space by the streams. And I really like this design. Around her there are several no uh, nobles smiling murmuring. I don't uh, truly recall who she is but I can help but feel a sense of familiarity. Welcome. Mikanti talked about you so much, I knew you would be easy to recognize. The girl's smile is bright and uh, rounds her cheeks, an easy twinkle in her eye. She didn't mention you were so cute though. Okay. <laughs> that manages to startle a laugh out of me and she grins. There we go. You look so serious. My name is Waru. I really love her hair. She looks like a mermaid. And come on. Oh my god, this is so annoying. Uh, yeah. So, this is to be expected. Uh, maybe I should tell the developers about this. I present the Maratihau of Utamakura. I'm guessing this is the name of her race and the place she comes from. It's a pleasure to meet you. Mikandi said your name was Belle. Yes, it is. It's lovely to meet you, Ambassador Waru. She narrows her eyes at me playfully. So serious again, and I had just gotten you to laugh. Okay. Please call me Waru. We're all friends here. I hadn't expected the officials here to be so friendly. I can see why she and Nikondi got along so quickly. Of course, Waru. There, there we go. People around for a murmur, and I can feel in my spine that whatever they're saying is not nice. A figure stands in the center of the surrounding crowd, obviously at home under the attention. Their strange eyes are lidded as they uh, drape an arm around the shoulders of one of their admirers. Another representative of the human homeland. The human homeland. Uh, scrambling around where you don't belong. Like ants, you think so are. This is really nice of you to say. Uh, let's ignore her. Uh, ignore them, sorry. Uh, I turn back to, uh, my back to them. Okay, sorry for that. There's a disapproving slant on her lips. She glances at them. Dear representative of the Melusine, the Melusine, right hand of the queen. She frowns as she leads me away following Mikandi's path. They've always been insufferable. Okay, I thought they are both of the same race, apparently not. I was hoping Queen Sylvie um, would have appointed someone new by now. Are you on bad terms? Warrior smile takes a turn for the right. Not bad, but we certainly aren't on good terms. But that's a discussion for another time. Let's not spoil the occasion with that kind of talk. 
The thunderous uh, boom of ceremonial drums breaks the uh, tense atmosphere and Wara smiles. I have business to attend to, unfortunately. I will see you later. I trust? Of course. With a final wave and a wide grin, Wara quickly disappears into the crowd. I manage to escape the glaring midday sun, uh, scampering further into the sanctum. The inside of the main chamber is enormous, multiple levels and walkways illuminated by the uh, glowing rays. And not a single inch of it void of light. It's a wonder I even made it through the door. People of all shapes and backgrounds flow through the halls. So many features I could have only read of it in books before this trip. Waru's bright hair and intricate tattoos, the shimmering skin of the elven figure from the streets. As my eyes dart from a person to person, they land on a face that would not normally give me pause. A figure I would normally assume was human stands isolated near one of the far walls. So, approach? I take a step in the man's direction, but as soon as I do, I find myself rattled by the passing guests, the man lost in the crowd. One particularly hard shove sent me straight in the, ch the chest of another guest. Oh, Iris doesn't hair tumbles over their shoulders as they write themselves. Ooh, I really love this. An intricately decorated cane hangs from a strap around their wrist as they grip my shoulders. Are you alright? Ariki. For a moment, I'm stunned by the brightness of his eyes, shimmering light. Maybe part of Waru's delegation? Yep. They are of the same race, I think. Oh, but oh my god, I really love this art. Look at the beautiful hair. He stares somewhere just past my head as he releases his grip. Bright white like mother of pearl. I must have taken too long to respond as the crease uh, between his brows deepens. I finally snap out of my stupor. I'm fine. My apologies. Oh no, don't worry. You almost took quite a tumble. My eyes drift to the small set of steps landing further into the sanctum. He's right, that could have hurt. I'm just glad you're alright. The architecture here is a bit uh, hazardous for new visitors. So many steps. Watch out for the decorative pawns too. They're always where you least expect them. Before I have the chance to respond, a low rumbling voice rings from the center of the hall. A tall man with piercing red eyes stared, uh, stares down at one of the elven officials, openly ignoring their attempts to placate him. How can they possibly be fighting already? This was supposed to be a summit for reconciliation, and this is what happens on the first day? And we avoid this. It's not really our business. While I feel anxiety clawing at my gut, I decide to stay away from the conflict. I know my duty is to my people first and foremost. Mikondi is at my side in seconds when the yelling grows louder and she loops her, an arm through mine. This way. This way. We can't have our most treasured representative get wrapped up now, can we? Her smile is a bit strained, her voice right, reedy. Um, she never had liked being in the midst of things like this. She leads me through the jeering crowds onto a small balcony. The cool air is almost refreshing enough to block out the cursing from the inside. Oh my god. Mikanti's shoulders sag in relief as soon as the crowd is out of sight. Her nose scrunching up in discomfort. The talks haven't even officially started and they're already fighting like children. Why did we even bother? She was so excited for this meeting 
hers to see it fall apart so quickly. She deserves better than this. we care for our people and I'm sure there's few grown-ups here still willing to talk to us. Nikondi blinks in surprise but manages a soft laugh. In that case, I'm glad our country decided to send an extra chaperone to help me out. My smile fades as that familiar hollow feeling rushes into my head and the floor rushes up to meet me as I fall just as fast. Mikondi's arms around my waist are the only thing keeping me from uh, crashing to the ground. When did those get there? Images flash in front of my eyes, each one faster than the last, until all I can see is blinding, swirling, infinitely bright green. As the brightness fades, Mikondi's concerned face swims back into view. Behind her, a familiar figure, red hair fanning up behind him as he urges palace guards towards us. Oh, it's the prince. The prince, then. And he's also one of the love interests. Um, the worry fades, the vision taking over entirely, and I think Mikondi is also one too. My eyes roam over the ceiling. Okay. Yeah. Something has uh, been drawn over us, surrounding us, keeping us inside. I try to lift a hand to it to see if it's tangible and my finger passed through it. Thick, like fog, but so much more oppressive. Mikanti's voice rings in my ears, a tremble of worry coursing through it. Bell? What is it? What's wrong? A shroud. I hear her gasp above me, her grip tightening on my waist. She knows of my visions, but she's never seen one firsthand. I guess this must be a bit uh, shocking. Mikandi lowers us fully to the ground and I lean on her shoulder. The sound of horrified gasps and panicked voices draws uh, my, guess, my gaze back to the inner chamber. Onlookers start um, start to whisper as guards are sent to close. Oh, yeah, see, this is... Ugh. Many guests have st uh, stepped back in panic while others watch in silence. Nikandi help me sit, uh, helps me sit up, a comforting hand on my shoulder. My vision was too late, and for a second I questioned why I was shown at all. A group gathered at the gate draws our attention, crowding around a young messenger boy. Pale, looking from uh, person to person with wild eyes. I need to talk to the prince, please. Make way. Deer stand in front of their throng of admirers f face a mixture of panic and fury. What on earth is happening out there? We demand an explanation. The messenger pales further, breaking into a cold sweat. Please move, I must find the prince. The panicked murmurs cried as the crowd parts, the prince wading through the masses. He's flanked by guards, all stone faced before the panicked crowd. Speak. Yeah. This is um, really annoying. So, in some uh, dialogues, the box moves really quickly before I can even finish, and then in some others, it just gets stuck. The messenger looks briefly stunned before bringing to stumble, beginning to stumble through his message. Um, there is, we aren't sure what it is, but we can't. The messenger takes a shuddering breath, fists clenched at his sides. Poor boy. The prince's expression softens and he places a bejeweled hand on the messenger's shoulder. Deep breaths, I'm in no rush. The side of his shoulders says otherwise, but his expression remains carefully relaxed. He must be as uh, protuberant as the rest of us. The messenger takes a shuddering breath, seemingly calmed. 
The city has been surrounded by a barrier that has proven thus far to be impenetrable, Your Highness. It is believed to be arcane in nature. The prince's eyes widen, but it takes him only a second to school his expression. A guest coughs from the crowd. Your messenger is improbable. Oh, your message. Impossible, even. Magic of that scale hasn't been cast in decades, least of all unaided by a purified riot. And even then, you would need thousands. The method is lost. The messenger shrinks back. I only know, uh, know what I've been told. No one is able to enter or exit. brow creases, but he doesn't seem to. Yeah, okay. He raises an arm and hush, of, hush falls over the area, his royal marking glimmering in the sunlight. His voice rings out clearly through the sanctum. My dear guests, keep yourselves calm. I assure you, your empress is looking into this matter as we speak. Please retire to your assigned rooms. We will keep you informed of any developments. The guests chitter nervously, some flocking around the prince for further assurances. Nikondi pulls me to my feet, hands held out even after she lets go as if uh, she fears I'll collapse again. Are you alright? You gave me a scare. I'm fine. I'm sorry to worry you. I smile, but I can tell by, the, by her expression that it isn't convincing. Just had my head in the clouds. Took a little bit of a tumble. Her eyes widen uh, slightly and she purses her, purses her lips. It's a hard secret to keep, but it's necessary for both of our sakes. A pair of servants approach and I can notice the crowd has thinned significantly. A young girl uh, dressed with a, uh, in bright, with in bright clothes the single golden tattoo over her left eyebrow uh, stops before me. Okay, yeah, so within this is another one of those typos. Um, here we go again. She curtsies quickly and politely, but uh, somewhat forcefully, offers to escort me to my room. Exhausted by my vision, I bid goodbye to Nikondi with a promise to meet again in the morning. The crease between her brows uh, fades slightly and I can see the exhaustion sinks in. She must be just as, if not more, tired. The servant girls escort us our separate ways through the hallways of the sanctum and I watch the day turn to night. Riot crystal illuminate um, the way through the pair of carved doors the pale wood creaking as they open. The room assigned to me is as stunning as the rest of the palace. Beautiful, rich fabric adorns the bed with uh, small baubles and trinkets lining nearly every open surface. I can't help but collapse uh, to the bed as soon as the door closes behind me, the warmth of the furs and fabrics relaxing my muscles. Moments, my eyelids begin to droop, but the nagging unease of the afternoon lingers. This isn't quite the day I expected, but it certainly was exciting. That vision, the fear in that messenger's voice, perhaps not the kind of exciting I was hoping for. Those visions were the first of many. This is just the beginning of an unwinding threat. And there we go. So, uh, yeah, so I think it's it's really interesting. I um, kind of want to see what happens next, but I'm going to leave that for next week. What I don't like is the amount of uh, bugs, like in the dialogue, some of them just move really quickly. And in, in most of them, it just like I keep clicking on the dialogue box, but nothing happens. I think I'm going to report this to the devs. They have to try and fix it. Yeah, but so... For now, um, I think this is it, and I shall see you next week.
Oh, and let me know if you like the game. Bye.